Welcome to Peterson Car Week. My name is Alan Peltier. I'm the president and CEO of H3 Performance Wheels, and today we're going to talk all about wheels. Construction, materials, how we design them, engineer them, and of course, how we make them. So who are we? A3 Wheels is a forged wheel manufacturer based in Vista, California. We make one-piece, two-piece, and three-piece forged wheels for sports cars, exotic cars, luxury cars, SUVs, and typically our forged wheels are going to range from say $5,000 to $15,000 a set. On the entry level side we have our Flowform series which comes in more like $2,500 a set. And we're also working on our HRE 3D Plus wheels, which are 3D printed wheels, but those are still in development, so pricing hasn't been defined yet. As many of you know, wheels can be made in many different ways. We have one piece, two piece, three piece, we have cast versus forged versus flow formed, and even 3D printed. I want to go over the difference in each of those methods and which ones we use here at HRE so you have a great understanding of how wheels are made. First off, it's best to understand the difference between one-piece, two-piece, and three-piece wheels. One-piece wheels are what you can imagine. It's made of one solid piece. Now that can be cast, forged, flow form, and we'll get into those differences in a second. A two-piece wheel has a separate center section and a rim barrel, and typically those are bolted together, but it can be done other ways. On a three-piece wheel, you have a separate center section but you have two different rim halves of varying widths, inner and an outer, and that gives you a lot of fitment flexibility. Moving beyond construction, a question we always get asked is, what's the difference between forged, cast, and flow formed? A cast wheel is kind of what you can imagine. You take molten aluminum and pour it into a mold, and after some detail machining and some processing, you pretty much have a complete wheel. So four starts out differently. It starts with a solid piece of billet, which gets put into a die, and using a lot of heat and pressure gets formed into the desired shape of the forging. Now that forging process changes the crystalline structure of the aluminum, making it significantly stronger than it was in its raw billet state. After it's been forged, the next step is to create the rim barrel. And the process used to do that is called flow forming. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this forging and put it on a big spinning mandrel. And you're going to use a lot of pressure to squeeze this aluminum out into the full width of the barrel. And what that does is, just like with the forging process, that squeezing of the aluminum refines the crystalline structure in the barrel and allows it to be significantly stronger than if we didn't. That allows us to make it thinner and lighter. So for our flow form wheels, they start out like a traditional cast wheel where you can use the molten aluminum to cast the center style. The difference is we're not going to cast the full barrel. We're actually just going to cast a skirt just like we have on the one piece forging. So after it's been cast, we're going to take it and put it on a mandrel just like we did with the one piece forging and we're going to flow form out the barrel. The advantage of flow forming just like forging, is that it changes the crystalline structure of the aluminum, making it significantly stronger. This allows us to make it significantly lighter, and it resists impact much better than a traditional cast wheel. Okay, so for our three-piece wheels, the rims are made a little bit differently. So unlike starting with a solid casting or forging, our three-piece rims actually start with a solid sheet of aluminum. But similar to the flow forming process, it's going to get put on a mandrel and spun out into the desired shape. So you can spin this, basically you fold the sheet over and spin it into the shape that you need. You do that both for the inner and the outer, and they both come together to make the combinations that you want for a three-piece wheel. So our two-piece and three-piece wheels are made a little bit differently than our one-piece monoblock in that instead of the whole profile 
in one piece, the forging consists only of the center. So we'll take this forging and after it's been machined and finished to the final specifications, we'll mate it to either the two-piece FMR barrel or our three-piece rims to make a complete wheel. So one of the most exciting new offerings from us on the forge side is our new Series S1SC. It consists of a forge center and our new FMR barrel. So what makes the FMR exciting for us is that it's made almost exactly like a one-piece forge wheel. It starts out as a forging, it gets flow formed. The only difference is after it's all done, we cut out the center section to make just a rim barrel that we can then bolt the center into. The advantage of the FMR barrel is that it's stronger and lighter and it doesn't require the air seal between the two rim halves like on a traditional three-piece rim. In addition, because it's fully CNC turned, we can control all the dimensions very accurately so it's gonna run truer than a three-piece rim. So for most of our forged wheels, we're talking about machining away the aluminum and that's subtractive manufacturing. But one of the projects we've been working on recently with GE Additive is our HRE 3D Plus program, which is additive manufacturing or 3D printing. For this project, we weren't just looking at 3D printing, we were looking at 3D printing titanium and mating that with a carbon barrel. As you can see with 3D printing, the amount of design freedom we have is simply unmatched compared to a normal machining process. There are still a lot of challenges to overcome to get something like this to market, but we're committed to new manufacturing methods and new materials because we know that's the future. So to be an HRE wheel, it needs to accomplish two things. Uh, one, it has to be gorgeous, and two, it has to perform. And by perform, I mean it needs to be strong, it needs to be light, it has to have low rotational inertia, and for high performance cars, it needs to have high stiffness. The way we ensure these traits is by doing a lot of computer analysis, namely FEA or finite element analysis. That allows us to finely tune the design in the computer before we ever start cutting any aluminum. So everybody knows high performance wheels need to be lightweight, but why? Well, there's two major reasons. One, unsprung mass, and two, rotational inertia. Unsprung mass is all the mass that's not supported by this suspension. So the wheels, tires, brakes. And the reason you want the unsprung mass to be low is so that when the wheel hits a disturbance or something like that, it's gonna put less force into the vehicle chassis and so you can get better ride comfort and better vehicle control if you're on the racetrack. Now the other aspect is rotational inertia. And rotational inertia is the distribution of the mass around the wheel's rotational axis. A good example for that is an ice skater. So if you're an ice skater and have your arms out and you're spinning slowly, and then you pull your arms in, you start spinning faster. You haven't reduced your mass, but you have reduced your rotational inertia. The reason that matters is acceleration and more important, deceleration. So if you have low rotational inertia, as you're diving into that corner, your stopping distances are gonna be significantly shorter than if you have a really big, heavy wheel that's gonna keep pushing you on. At HRE, we offer a lot of custom finishes, but one thing that's really unique is we offer three different finishes to the bare aluminum before we put on our different clear coats. So this is our stone finish, which gives it a unique marbled look. This is our popular hand brush finish. And this is our polish finish, in this case, a frozen polished bronze. So after you pick one of our three base metal finishes, either the stone, brushed, or polish, you can pick whether you want it to be full clear or any of our colored clears, and then whether or not you want it to be gloss or satin. So now that we've given you a quick overview of our wheels, let's go out in the shop and show you how we make them. facility here in Vista, California. It's 60,000 square feet. This is where we house our design, engineering, sales, marketing, and finance, and obviously our manufacturing. So the first step in machining is lathing. That's where we're gonna come in and we're gonna cut the precise profile needed for each particular style. 
So the next step in machining is milling. This is where we're gonna go in and cut out all of the spoke features and all of the design details. So the milling can take anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour for something simple like this, or it can take several hours on something that's more common for us and up to nine hours in our most difficult styles. One of the major investments we made three years ago was to connect all of our horizontal mills to this cell system. It uses a robot to automatically load and unload the machines. This allows us to run 24 seven, seven days a week, lights out. So this is the control panel for the cell system where we can see all the different stations. But one really neat thing about this is we have all of the computer data from the work order gets sent down to the mills directly. So all the machining specifications are fed directly to the mills without needing any additional user input. So after the wheels go through machining, they're gonna go through a rigorous QC check. The machine we use to do this is called a CMM. It allows us to precisely check critical dimensions very, very accurately. What's also really neat about the CMM, it allows us to track the QC data and look at trends and see if there's anything that's trending out before we go out of tolerance. So after our wheels pass machining QC, they're gonna go to the prep room. This is where we're gonna hand prep out any machining lines before they go into the tumblers. And this is where we're also gonna do our really nice hand brush finishes. So these are our media tumblers. This is where we're gonna do the first basic prep step before we send the wheels on to powder coat. So for our standard powder coats, all the wheels are gonna go through this media tumbler. This is gonna create a really nice consistent finish that allows the powder coat to lay down nice and smoothly. For all of our translucent powder coats, we offer three different metal finishes. The first being what we call stone, and that's after it's gone through this coarse media tumbler and it creates a very unique marbled finish. The second base finish we offer is our brush finish. As you can see, it's done by hand. It can take several hours per wheel, depending on the complexity of the design. What's neat about our brush finish, it's never gonna be perfectly uniform. But that really highlights the fact that this has been done by hand by an artisan versus a machine. So the third metal finish we offer is our ceramic ball polish. After going through the first media tumbler, it's gonna spend some time in this second media tumbler here. And then the final step for our polish is gonna go into this ceramic media, which is gonna get it to a nice, bright polish. So after prep, the wheels come to the cleaning station to get prepared for powder coat. The very first step in cleaning is it's gonna go through this high temperature washer. Honestly, it's kinda of like an industrial dishwasher, but it does a great job of removing all the contaminants before we move it downstream. So after cleaning, our wheels are gonna go into powder coat. Powder coat is a fine powder that's electrostatically charged and applied to the wheels. Once it goes into the oven, it's gonna cure into a nice, robust paint. Time and temperature are really critical during the cure, though, because if you have it in at too high of a temperature, you can easily damage the forged aluminum. So after our wheels come out of powder coat, they're gonna go through an inspection and get touched up if necessary. For our two-piece and three-piece wheels, one key step is final assembly. We're gonna attach our centers to our three-piece rims or our two-piece FMR barrel. So before assembly, we're gonna check for any finish flaws and do any touch-up as necessary. One thing to realize about assembly is that the fasteners are not decorative. They're actually structural and holding all of the parts together. So all of our standard stainless and optional titanium fasteners are supplied by ARP because they're well known in the racing world for their high quality and strength. After assembly, all of our wheels move on to a final QC where we're gonna double check a lot of the critical dimensions and specifications before the wheels move on to packaging and shipping. So now that we know how our wheels are made, let's go see how they look on a couple cars. So here we have a really important car for HRE this year, and that's the new Corvette C8. This one's owned by Boost District, and we're here, it's gonna get a supercharger that's gonna give it maybe up to another 300 horsepower. So 
this one's got a speed core carbon aero kit with the front splitter and side skirt, and we're hearing it's the very first one they've made for the C8. So as we head to the back, this one's got the optional high wing. So on the Corvette, we have our new S1 SC series, in this case, an S101 SC in polished dark clear with the FMR barrel in brush dark clear. This one's also got our optional carbon fiber cap. Great example of a target market car for us. This one's brought to us by Tag Motorsports, one of our dealers. This is a 2020 Ferrari tailor-made 488 Pista, which means they got to pick custom finishes and custom interior. I mean, you got to check it out. This one also has a full Novatec carbon aero package with ink and L exhaust and suspension. I mean, it's awesome. So here we have our S101 SE in a frozen dark clear and the FMR barrel in a brush dark clear. This one's got the hidden hardware option where the fasteners are coming from the back so you don't see them from the face. Just as most HREs, this one's running on Michelin's, in this case PS4S, which is a wonderful all around high performance tire. Now we gotta check out the interior. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. From all of us at HRE, we hope to see you soon.